This is Learn From Others, where we interview a cross-section of successful individuals so you can learn from their experiences, achievements, and even their mistakes. We ask four questions that will educate and inspire. Greg Stanley will be your guide as we join our guests on a journey from adolescent daydreaming to success in today's world. Join us on this adventure as we learn from others together. Welcome to Learn From Others, where we help others succeed by sharing success. I'm very excited to introduce our special guest, Taru Clavel. Taru, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you, Greg? I'm doing wonderful. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, it's my it's my absolute pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Well, before we find out what you're actually doing today, if you would, could you tell me what you want to be when you grew up? So I, I always wanted to be an entrepreneur. Oh, okay. Now, how did that manifest itself as a child? Well, you sent me a, a group of great prep questions, and I have to say, I think it was that I was always looking for a job and was always looking for a way to make money and be independent. So I had (laughs) almost every kind of job you can imagine from the time I was 13 years old. So what was like your first job you got paid? So my first job, $5 an hour, mailroom, working for the publicity department of a large company, stuffing, rolling up (laughs) publicity posters and stuffing them into tubes and being so proud that, you know, every label was perfectly on the tube. And, you know, I mean, I think nobody would have cared back then, but to me, it was, it was just the most important thing on the planet to get that right. Now, where'd you get that work ethic at such an early age? It's a good question. So my mom, I'm the, uh, the, daughter of a first-gen immigrant from Japan, and she grew up, was born literally 1946, 1946 and war ravaged Osaka, Japan. So she she was all about working hard and raising yourself up from, you know, the bootstraps kind of a thing. And I think I always saw that. And she was always, you know, in that back then too, she was the abacus. And I remember going to sleep at night and I would just hear her clickety clacketing on the abacus all night long. So I think it was just, you have to work hard. And I mean, you know, it led to I scooped ice cream at Ben and Jerry's. I was a waitress. <laughs> I sliced bagels. I mean, I did so much stuff through college. Um, my mom didn't believe in, in giving me any kind of a payout. So I was always looking for, for ways to make money. Yeah. Yeah. Very wise lesson at an early age for sure. Right? Yeah. Wow. That's great. Well, tell us, what do you do today? My first book was just released with Simon & Schuster imprint Atria. So I guess you could call me an author. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And the name of the book is World Class, One Mother's Journey Halfway Around the globe in search of the best education for her children. So what I do today is I'm a speaker and writer about education and how parents can and teachers can better create a more globally competitive student body. Do you consider yourself today like an educational entrepreneur? I do. I mean, right now, if anybody knows anything about becoming an author, unless you're a top 10 author and your name is J.K. Rowling, you're not really going to make any money. So what this is, is a platform for me to, I have a children's book series coming out, um, hopefully a docu-series and hopefully some other products. And unfortunately, you know, education is kind of Fortunately, it's nonprofit, but to make any money from it, I have to be creative. So I, uh, I have a team that I work with, and it is very much an entrepreneurial venture. And, you know, it's, I think, what helps in thinking about, I mean, in my 20s, I had a job in advertising. I was a restaurant manager. I went into interior design. I went back to school and did that. And I was a host, actually, for an HGTV show in my late 20s. And then I went back and got <laughs> wow. a master's in comparative international education. I did all these things, but... And I always wondered, like, am I crazy? Is this all going to, you know, work out somewhere? But every single one of my job experiences has completely informed and influenced what I'm doing right now. That's amazing. Yeah, because a lot of folks, students think, oh, it'll be a nice straight path to my career. But it never is. It's usually quite the adventure to get to where you want to be, right? Yeah, and there's so many, and we'll talk about this, I'm sure, but all the failures that you feel like are just going to destroy you, you know, throughout your whole career path. And, And then now I realize, wow, I learned so much from that. I won't ever do it that way again, or it worked well this way because X, Y, and Z, and then you, and then you try to re- replicate that. What was your drive to kind of look at the way folks are educated? How did you explore that and the fruit coming from that journey? So I educated my kids, my three kids in the local public schools of Hong Kong, Shanghai, Tokyo, and then Silicon Valley until I moved back home to New York City in 2018. And The drive was really that I saw when I came back to the U.S. how compared to where I was, our education system was really, really behind. And it comes from everything from 
equitable education, meaning not everybody in the U.S. gets the same kind of education, right, depending on where you live. It comes from the, the varied and, I guess, by state teacher training and how it is very, very different from that in East Asia and how teachers here are not paid as well, not respected, not trained to the same level of rigor. And then, you know, our, our kids and our teachers really suffer for it. And so I had this I had this idea that I really had to write a book about it because I knew as an education reporter also when I was in Asia, I had this body of knowledge both professionally and personally that I needed to share. So that's that's been my mission. That's very interesting. And it's such a long journey you took to get there. Yeah, it really was. <laughs> but, you know, I'm, I'm actually, you know, because I'm bicultural and I spoke Japanese in my home and and my home was very much Japanese growing up. I always had this interest in comparative international education. So it, it's, it's probably been something that's been a part of me my whole life. So now, if you could walk us through like your typical work week. So that's a tough one. And I want to be really <laughs> honest because, you know, I think some people think, and, and less so these days, but there's no nine to five for me. I'm the mother of three kids and something is always going on with one of them, but I do have work commitments, but I have chosen a career where I can be flexible. Even today, I had two mandatory school meetings. And I guess that's all to say, you know, when I first embarked on this whole journey of being an author, I thought, okay, I'm going to sit at my desk and be productive from, you know, 5 to 7 a.m. and then again from 9 to 12 noon. And it never works that way. It's never worked that way as, as much as I've tried over the countless number of years that I've been writing. And it's literally my my job requires me to be as flex, flexible and as adaptable as possible at all given moments. So it's meetings with philanthropy leaders uh, like I just had today or podcast interviews or <laughs> or radio interviews that pop up at the last minute, TV appearances, an opportunity to write an article, a networking opportunity, a speaking engagement that comes up. Sometimes I have two, three, four months to prepare for it. Other times they come up within a week and the audiences are different. So I literally don't have, unfortunately, any regularity in my life, including with meals, except I know that I have to be pretty much in bed by 10 or 11 p.m. <laughs> yeah. Well, for some people that would scare them to death. Other people, it would be perfect. You know, absolutely what they live for to have that kind of flexibility. But there's a lot that comes with that because you have to be very regimented and making sure that you get your stuff done to be successful. And it's not necessarily easy. I mean, it's, there's some days when, you know, when you're, when it's quiet, you're so happy, but then you think, huh, why is it quiet? <laughs> if I should, you know, I should be out there doing more. And then when you're doing it all, you know, you, you, all you can think about is, you know, Thanksgiving and when you can make an excuse to sleep and eat <laughs> turkey. So yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely waves of up and down. And I think the more flexible I can be, the better for, for my needs. Yeah, no, that's great. As a reminder, you can check out all previous episodes at learnfromothers.org. And if you're an educator or a student, you can search for podcasts by Career Cluster. So we learned what you wanted to be when we grew up. Well, actually, we didn't really kind of, you kind of wanted to do a lot of different things. You wanted to be an entrepreneur and you did a lot of stuff. And we learned what mm -hmm. you what you do today, which is an author and an educational entrepreneur. So looking back on it all, what would you do differently? That's a question I think about all the time. And if I did something differently, I wouldn't be where I am today. So it's like this, this double-edged sword. Something that I think I would do differently is think about, and this is probably part of my mission, I don't think I had very good guidance in terms of the educational decisions I made. Where I went to college is one. And I did go to a prestigious Ivy League school, and I went because it was so different. It was in the country. It was, I want to even say the country. It was in the middle of nowhere. And I thought it would be really good for me because I am a city person. And what I realized in hindsight is maybe I should have gone to a more urban school because that's who I am. And I would have more easily found kind of my people there, and it would have right. been a more kind of international experience. So as much as I'm all about, you know, challenging yourself and trying new things, I think uh, my college selection, I would revisit that and change that. Hmm, that's a very interesting answer. That's good. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Well, now let's talk to the students out there. Uh, let's say our student wants to do what you do. Now, you can define that as an author or as an entrepreneur and a speaker, which is really hard to do. Uh, what <laughs> advice would you give them? <laughs> In terms of the speaking, people ask me, why, why do you like speaking or do you get nervous? And I thrive on it. And I think if you'd asked me 10 years ago if I liked it, I would say absolutely not. And I went back to, to get my master's. So I went back to, I got my 
the second degree in comparative international education later in life. So I was in my 30s already, and I had to do these presentations all the time. And I was, I felt like I was horrible at it. But when I was in my first term, I thought, this is something I'm going to master. I'm going to get this right. And I was just determined to do it. And so to me, that was something that I just had to overcome. And I would say, roll up your sleeves and go after something you're not good at and make it a challenge and get good at it if that's something that you think is important to you. And now I love it. I love thinking that, you know, 10 years ago, I just thought it was going to be atrocious at it. And I just kept working at it and working at it. And I think I'm actually quite a strong speaker now. Uh, so yeah, that's something that I would I would say go go after it. If it's the most challenging and you want it, don't give up. Just keep going, keep persevering because it's you get better at it. Everybody else gives up, so be the one who doesn't give up. Right, right. No, that's great advice. Well, are there any current projects you're working on that you would like to share? Yeah, so I'm promoting my book, World Class. You can find <laughs> yep. it online at your local independent bookseller. Let's support them as well. And I'm working with parents and teachers and trying to help them with solutions on how to move the needle to uh, elevate our, our learning outcomes for our kids. And I have, hopefully in the next year, a kids' book series coming out for 8 to 12-year-olds. And I will keep you posted on that, so stay in touch with me if you'd like to learn about that. Yeah, I think those are my those are my big projects. And I always have articles and speaking engagement, tons of speaking engagements coming up. So stay in touch with me. You can find me online, teruclavelle.com. I'm on social media as well. Yeah, that's really great. And I will uh, add any updates you have to our newsletter. So for our listeners, if you haven't signed up for our newsletter, just go to the website. And I only send one out about every month, month and a half. So no spamming. <laughs> but we'll <laughs> we'll provide updates. Yeah, I was about to ask you, Are there what's the best way to contact you and your company? Uh, so what would be the best route? Yeah, so it's my website, T-E-R-U-C-L-A-V-E-L.com. I'm on social media so that's twitter instagram facebook and linkedin and i have a simon and schuster author page i do interviews pretty regularly uh that you can download and listen to everything from something as more niche as how to find the right preschool for your child to what are the kind of four actionable solutions that uh, you can implement right away in your homes as parents to help your kids and that's everything from elevating your learning expectations and taking advantage of your community resources, how to use technology, uh, those kinds of things. So yeah, keep in touch with me and, and hopefully we can work together. I love talking about this stuff. No, that's great. Well, thank you for taking us on your uh, career journey today. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me, Greg. Thank you for listening to Learn From Others, where we help others succeed by sharing success. Where will our next adventure take us? Subscribe to find out. If you know of someone who has a cool career story or occupation, contact Greg through Instagram at Greg Stanley LFO. That's G-R-E-G-S-T-A-N-L-E-Y-L-F-O. And we will see you soon as we learn from others together.